Frequency Radio. Uh, he's on at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, also, to check out all his books uh, here, uh, Bullyocracy is the one we've been talking about, how the social hierarchy enables bullies to rule schools and workplaces and society at large. Now, this one's uh, January 15, 2020. It's coming up. I sure you can make a pre-order now, though. Uh, crimes and Cover-Ups, the American Politics, uh, Hidden Histories, an expose of modern crimes, conspiracy and cover-ups in American politics. We've had them on several times before, so just Google uh, Ed Opperman, Spreaker, Donald Jeffries. You'll come up with some of these previous shows. Uh, we'll be right back after these messages. And now a word from our sponsors. Are you ready to change your life but don't know how to start? Is your stress and worries keeping you awake at night? Have you been battling grief, anxiety, or depression all alone? Have you lost touch with your own sense of being or spirituality? Soul Free Therapies offers professional and affordable live video streaming counseling and coaching services from the comfort of your own home. Sessions offered in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. Go to our website at www.soul-free.com and book your first session today. Hey, check out our brand new sponsor, Dynamic Solutions 2. That's the number two. They offer a life-changing dynamic financial solution. The finest in fast, professional, affordable credit repair. Is your credit in bad shape? Do you need a new car? Ready to buy a new house? Do you want to rent an apartment? Are you going to apply for a job? Any one of these activities, they're going to ask for a credit report and then check out your credit score. Let Dynamic Solutions 2 erase your negative credit remarks. They have affordable monthly prices. They accept Visa, MasterCard, PayPal options available. You go to www.dynamicsolutions, that's the number two, dot com, or call 424-888-2820, 424-888-2820. Now, if you enter promo code ED or you mention Ed Opperman, you get a 10% discount. How's that? You get a free consultation, all negative items removed, get back in positive credit position, Dynamic Solutions 2, life-changing Dynamic Financial Solutions. 424-888-2820. Tell them Ed Opperman sent you. You get a 10% discount. Hey, you, podcast listener. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. Take the blue pill. You wake up in your bed and go back to listening to mundane podcasts that won't challenge your religious beliefs and your so-called truths about reality, the universe, and consciousness. Take the red pill. Subscribe to the Event Horizon podcast, hosted by Mark Anthony Peterson, and he will show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Event Horizon takes a walk into the paranormal with a splash of conspiracy. It's the podcast that would be born if David Icke and the X-Files had a baby. Subscribe to the Event Horizon podcast by Mark Anthony Peterson on Spreaker, iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, CastBox, Stitcher, or any of your other favorite podcast platforms. Remember, all we are offering is the truth, nothing more. It's the Opperman Report. And now, here is investigator Ed Opperman. Okay, welcome back to the Opperman Report. I'm your host, private investigator Ed Opperman. We're here today with Donald Jeffries, a host of a radio show over at uh, Truth Frequency Radio, uh, Friday nights, 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, author of many, many books. We've had him on many times in the past. Um, Bullyocracy, we just spent a, a good half hour talking about. Uh, but Donald, we... we Schedule this interview because um, I had found an old YouTube video of uh, Johnny Carson. Yeah. In 1984, talking about Prince Andrew and little girls. Um, 1984, imagine that. And then it brought up the discussion on, on weird scenes inside the Canyon discussion group on Facebook. Then it brought up the Carol Wayne, who was a frequent guest on there. She played this uh, character actress, uh, played a blonde bimbo. Uh, she's been on Love American Style all the time. And had a very mysterious death, and and you're working on a book uh, on that topic. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm working as, on on borrowed fame as a tentative title, and it has it has a lot about uh, the those kind of uh, 
incidents. I covered a Carol Wayne incident. It was, and you know, these kinds of deaths are far too common in Hollywood. And uh, there's so many parallels between show business and the world of politics. You know, in my book, Hidden History, especially, and all my books, the new book as well, Crimes and Cover-Ups in American Politics, uh, I tabulate these unnatural deaths, you know, murders, suicides, unexplained falls from buildings, uh, you know, things, people, most people don't die that way. And, uh, but in show business and in politics, uh, they, they tend to uh, disproportionately die in these strange ways. And m many times in, in politics and in show business, there's no uh, resolution there, we we're just left with, okay, this is, he might have died because of this, might have died because of that, and that shouldn't be. Uh, as I've said before, you know, how many of us would be satisfied with one of our loved ones dying under strange circumstances and kind of being left up in the air? Well, we don't really know why, and that happens all too often. And in the world of show business, um, Carol Wayne was, uh, you know, again, as you mentioned, she was kind of a ditzy blonde type that uh, was you know they joked about her big boobs a lot on Johnny Carson would you know do his thing back then and um, I think she was a big part of the Mighty Carson art player so he used yeah. to do the skits but she um, died very mysteriously she drowned supposedly in very shallow water right? two three feet or something like that in Mexico during a vacation in Mexico and uh, she was there with a guy named Edward Durston a very shady character who uh, we know very little about. I did find out he died at some point, but I can't find any other information out about him. But he was also at the scene years earlier of the, when uh, Diane Linkletter, daughter of uh, famous talk show host Art Linkletter, uh, jumped, supposedly jumped out of a, a high-rise window of her apartment. And he was the last one there with her baking cookies or something. Well, flash forward to this, and he's on vacation in Mexico. So just, just the fact that, I mean, what are the odds that you'd be at scene the last person seen with two people dying under those kind of circumstances. Uh, Durston doesn't appear to have been seriously questioned. He may have had some uh, strange connections, uh, as perhaps as a drug dealer. It's kind of unclear, but uh, certainly I know Carol Wayne's family wasn't satisfied. And I exchanged emails with John Blythe Barrymore because Carol Wayne was uh, connected to the Barrymore family, the great acting family, through her sister Nina Wayne, who was, all, was also an actress. It was on a lot of 60s shows, not as much as Carol, but she was pretty busy too. And um, she was the mother of uh, a daughter, I forget her name, that who was found dead in her car a few years back. And John Blythe Barrymore was uh, still kind of uh, bitter about that and uh, talked about, um, you know, that definitely he didn't believe the story at all. And he suggested I contact some other relative who never, uh, never responded to my message. But, uh, but it's just, you know, it's a, a, the official cause of death is, you know, apparent drowning, but uh, no one explains how. Someone who, and, and it's unclear, you know, John Blythe Barrymore told me she was an expert swimmer, but all the other reports on the subject claim she didn't know how to swim. But regardless, you know, it, it, you don't have to know how to swim if it's two or three feet of water. I mean, like, you know, unless you're, you're under, under three feet tall or something, uh, you're, 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 not, you're not supposed to drown under those circumstances. So... That's just one of many, you know, deaths like that in the end that I cover in the book. I mean, certainly, you know, the the more infamous ones are, you know, Marilyn Monroe, John Belushi, Natalie Wood. I had Lana Wood, Natalie's actress sister, uh, on my radio show a few months back, and she's still dissatisfied and doesn't believe the official conclusion that she drowned. I, I, I don't either. She didn't know how to swim. There's no way she would have been going out on the water like that at night. But these things are invariably swept under the rug. Bobby Fuller, the Bobby Fuller Four, you know, the, 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 Dave McGowan wrote about a lot of these, and I'm indebted to him uh, for weird scenes inside the canyon because he, you know, he does great. He did great work, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, he found out all kinds of stuff about Bobby Fuller. He's an up-and-coming artist. You know, he, hit, at the time he died, they had this song "I Fought the Law and the Law Won." Everybody's probably heard that. It was a huge smash and uh, a bright future. But uh, you know, who knows? There are rumors that he may have. Uh, uh, you know, confronted somebody in the mob. You know, there's so much mob influence in show business. I talk a lot about that in the book. Uh, there, it just is. I mean, that's and that's that's not only a reason for a lot of these strange deaths, but also a reason for why a lot of the artists, especially the black artists, back then really did not get paid very much money. And I, I recount a lot of that there. Where you know, Morris Levy, who was the uh, the very thuggish head of uh, uh, Roulette Records. 
uh, Tommy James and the Shondells. Tommy James wrote a lot about him, but uh, I heard lots of stories about this guy where, you know, some one insider that had been in a band back in the 60s, didn't want me to mention his name, told me that uh, when, uh, oh, God, I can't remember the guy's name. Um, I think it was Jimmy Rogers, folk singer. But he, he'd had several big hits. And uh, he hadn't had any, he sort of literally, so many of these guys literally had not gotten any royalties. And so he walked into Morris Levy's office and asked him about it. And Levy supposedly opened his desk drawer and waved a gun at him and said, there's your royalties. And uh, his, his usual claim to uh, to people that ask about royalties, well, you know, you want royalties, go talk to the uh, the king and queen of England or something. And uh, But that's what happened. A lot, a lot of, uh, it's amazing that, uh, that so I, I just I think that uh, this was uh, and something's always interested me you know the, the the old Hollywood especially but the entire entertainment industry I think was uh, overdue for a good look especially at the way that you know having written Survival of the Riches which is about the disparity of wealth I'm naturally interested in uh, the disparity of wealth in Hollywood and the disparity of how finances work there you know some people are you know are set up for life on residuals others seem to struggle and have to get regular jobs it's just it's a tough subject that fascinates me because i really don't understand how it works i think maybe a lot of times it's the luck of the draw where you just sign a bad contract or something or you're naive but certainly the the murders uh you know and the the unexplained deaths you know people john belushi or elvis you know things like that are they're that are that are well known, and lots more that are uh, Brittany Murphy. That was in recent years. That um, some of these overlap into the world of politics. We talked a little bit about Gary Devore, the uh, the film director that was supposedly working on a, an expose about Libya, I think, about Qaddafi or something, and uh, found dead and in his car, strapped in his car with his hands missing. And then they supposedly find his hands away from the body, and they analyze them and, and say they're 200 years old. I mean. I, you know, I don't even know how to analyze that. That's that's so bizarre. But uh, and then you were talking about the private investigator that uh, that worked that case. And uh, so it's just there. There's there's so many things that that's why you know Randy Quaid. It seems like a nut to us now, especially with his beard and his appearance. But uh, his Star Walker Whacker's theory, I think, has some validity. Well, what did you come up with with uh, John Belushi? Well. I think Kathy Evelyn Smith is a, a very, you know, very shadowy figure there, and she seems to again to have escaped. Even though she had lots of uh, connections to people uh, in the in the music business, and seems to have been some kind of a I, I wouldn't say she was necessarily a groupie, but she seemed to be more like somebody who was providing drugs, and she seems certainly to have been the one who gave uh, Belushi uh, what I guess they called it a San Francisco speedball, a combination of deadly combination of heroin and cocaine that night that apparently killed him and she seems to have escaped any kind of punishment and uh, I find that very curious and uh, Belushi I, I think I mentioned in our previous interview uh, it didn't get recorded but uh, one thing that really uh, interests me about Belushi is I, I'm almost certain he was a JFK assassination right. aficionado because uh, in the book on Saturday Night Live his best friend in real life Dan Aykroyd mentioned about his close friendship with Judge Jim Garrison and uh, there would be no reason for him to know J Judge Jim Garrison is really known for you know, he's known for the JFK assassination, and of course his obvious investigation in that. So, um, so that tells me Belushi definitely was probably in my my mind was probably about the same time I was you know younger than him, but I was running around you know waving books about it and pontificating about the conspiracy. I, I have an idea he was probably doing that behind the scenes at the same time. So, whenever anybody has those interests. I tend to automatically uh, attribute a subsequent death like this to uh, to that interest. And uh, I give you an example of uh, Freddie Prinze, who was the most uh, you know popular comedian at the time. Well, during a young, up and coming guy, 21, 22 years old, when Chico and the Man was on big hit TV show, stand up comedian. I know I was working with Mark Lane as a teenager, uh, as a teenage volunteer at Citizens Committee of Inquiry. We were trying to uh, lobby Congress to reopen the assassination, which they eventually did to our disillusionment. But uh, that, at that time, we were hopeful. And uh, I was there stuffing envelopes in his office, and Freddie Prinze called him. from he got, And he came down and told myself and another teenager all about how interested Freddie Prinze was. He was obsessed with the Kennedy assassination. He was calling him constantly. He was talking about doing a telethon in Hollywood, but he couldn't get any, uh, any of the stars interested. 
And uh, it was only a couple months after that that Freddie Prince supposedly killed himself. So if I hadn't been there that day at Mark Lane's office, I would have had no reason to kind of.